Is this funny, sir? No, it's not. It's tragic. Do you have an answer? Absolutely. My answer is I don't have the first damn clue. Maybe he was an early riser and liked to pack in the morning. And maybe he didn't have any friends. I'm an educated man, but I'm afraid I can't speak intelligently about the travel habits of William Santiago. What I do know is that he was set to leave the base at 0600. Now, are these really the questions that I was called here to answer? Phone calls and foot lockers? Please tell me that you have something more, Lieutenant. These two Marines are on trial for their lives. Please tell me that their lawyer hasn't pinned their hopes to a phone bill. Do you have any other questions for me, Counselor? Lieutenant Cathy. <laughs> Lieutenant, do you have anything further for this witness? Thanks, Danny. I love Washington. Excuse me. I didn't dismiss you. I beg your pardon? I'm not through with my examination. Sit down. Colonel. What's that? I'd appreciate if he would dress me as Colonel or Sir. I believe I've earned it. Defense counsel will address the witness as Colonel or Sir. I don't know what the hell kind of unit you're running here. And the witness will address this court as judge or your honor. I'm quite certain I've earned it. Take your seat, Colonel. What do you want to discuss now? My favorite color? Colonel, the 6 a.m. flight was the first one off the base? Yes. There wasn't a flight that left seven hours earlier and landed at Andrews Air Force Base at 2 a.m.? Lieutenant, I think we've covered this, haven't we? Your Honor, these are the Tower Chief's logs for both Guantanamo Bay and Andrews Air Force Base. Guantanamo log lists no flight that left at 11 p.m. and the Andrews log lists no flight that landed at 2 a.m. I'd like to admit them as defense exhibits Alpha and Bravo. I don't understand. You're admitting evidence of a flight that never existed. Oh, we believe it did, sir. Defense will be calling Airman Cecil O'Malley and Airman Anthony Rodriguez. They were working the ground crew at Andrews at 2 a.m. on the 7th. Your Honor, these men weren't on the list. Rebuttal witnesses, Your Honor, called specifically to refute testimony offered under direct examination. I'll allow the witnesses. This is ridiculous. Colonel, a moment ago, check the tower logs for Christ's sake. Well, we'll get to the airmen in just a minute, sir. A moment ago, you said that you ordered Lieutenant Kendrick to tell his men that Santiago wasn't to be touched. That's right. And Lieutenant Kendrick was clear on what you wanted? Crystal. Any chance Lieutenant Kendrick ignored the order? Ignored the order? Any chance he forgot about it? No. Any chance Lieutenant Kendrick left your office and said, the old man is wrong? No. When Lieutenant Kendrick spoke to the platoon and ordered them not to touch Santiago, any chance they ignored him? You ever served in an infantry unit, son? No, sir. Ever served in a forward area? No, sir. Ever put your life in another man's hands? Asked him to put his life in yours? No, sir. We follow orders, son. We follow orders or people die. It's that simple. Are we clear? Yes, sir. Are we clear? Crystal. Colonel, I have just one more question before I call Airman O'Malley and Airman Rodriguez. If you gave an order that Santiago wasn't to be touched, and your orders are always followed, then why would Santiago be in danger? Why would it be necessary to transfer him off the base? Santiago was a substandard Marine. He 
He was being transferred. That's not what you said. You said he was being transferred because he was in grave danger. That's correct. You said I... he was in danger. I said grave danger. You said, is there I any other... I recall what I said. I can have the court reporter read back to you. I know what I said. I don't have to have it read back to me like I'm... Why the two orders? Colonel? Sometimes men take matters into their own hands. No, sir, you made it clear just a moment ago that your men never take matters in their own hands. Your men follow orders or people die. So Santiago shouldn't have been in any danger at all, should he have, Colonel? You snotty little Your Honor, I'd like to ask for a recess. I'd like an answer to the question, Judge. The court will wait for an answer. 